So we are in chapter 4, and in these problems we are asked to reduce the system of forces to 0.0. That means to find an equivalent system of forces in 0.0. From the theory we know that we reducing a system of forces means to find the resultant force and the moment about 0.0. So reducing a system of forces means finding the resultant force and the moment respect to so reducing the system of forces to 0.0 right means finding the resultant force and the moment respect to that point and those are vectors since it's a 2d we know that the moment is in the direction perpendicular to the screen in K, right? Could be negative or positive K. So let's start. The resultant force will have two components, right? Resultant force in X plus resultant force in Y. To find the resultant force in X and Y, what we do is express each of these three forces in terms of its component. So let's do that. So we have F1 will be equals to 3 as a magnitude, and then we decompose the force in x and y. And as you see, in x component will be cosine of 30 in i, and sine of 30 in j. And that's all in kilonewtons. So, and this is a vector. So F1 will be 3, Cosine of 30, you know that is square root of 3 over 2. And sine of 30 will be equals to 1 half. So we were able to express F1. F2 is this one right here, and we will do the same. This is theta, and as you see, this is also theta. So we will have 5, which is our uh, magnitude of the force times. So we decompose in x, which will be the cosine of this angle, and the cosine of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it will be 3 fifths in i. And then we have a negative component in j, which is times the sine of that angle. And the sine of that angle is 4 over 5. So it will be 5 times 4 over 5 in J. And all that in kilonewtons. And F3 is easy. It has only component in the Y direction. I will be 4 in negative J kilonewtons. So if we add all the X values and all the Y values, we get that the resultant force will be equals to. So I add the x value, which is this one right here, plus this one right here, and I don't have any component in x. And if you add that, you get a value of 5.584 in x, and in y I get 6.50 in y. And all that, my units are kilonewtons. So I was able to find the resultant force. As a vector, actually we like to find the resultant force also in magnitude and direction. So we, here we have that the resultant force will be a vector which have a component in x and component in y, so it's somewhere around here, this is the resultant force. So how do I find the magnitude and that angle? Let me call that angle phi because I already used theta. So the magnitude of that force will be the square root of each of the components which gives me a value of 
8.58 kilonewtons. And the angle, phi will be the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite is the y component over the adjacent, which is 5.598. Please notice that I do not use the negative sign within the tangent. Why? Because I am already considered the angle to be negative and I am already considering this triangle, which is my right triangle, and I'm using the uh, trigonometric function tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. And that gives me an angle of 49.3 degrees. So I was able to find the resultant force as a vector and as magnitude and direction. Let's do now here that I have a little bit of space, the moment. Moment, as you know, is equal to R cross F, as in vector approach, right? And at scalar approach, moment is equal to distance times force and distance has to be perpendicular to force. Since it is a 2D problem, I can use either approach, but since this is a 2D problem, I will use the scalar approach and the direction, positive or negative, of the moment I will do it with the right hand rule. Please remember that since this is X, this is Y, the moment will be positive when I is clockwise, and will be negative when it's clockwise, right? Okay, so I will take the moment of each of these forces, the components. So my moment, the total moment will be the moment produced by this force. Let me write it like that. Plus the moment produced by F2 plus the moment produced by F3. And I, as you see, I'm not writing it as a vector because I know the direction is in K, but it will be positive or negative. Let's do the moment produced by force one. So I have to take into consideration that I have two components, right? We already said F1X and F1Y. And as you see, if I'm taking moment respect to this point, F11, I can slide it here until here, and I have this that, uh, the um, distance. So I will have, let me write it like here, mf1 will be equal to this distance, which is 0 0.1, times the x component of f1, which I already know that is 3, square root of 3 over 2. And what is the direction of this moment? If I place my hand, this point over here at O, this is the direction of the distance, and I put my fingers towards the force, I see that this is the direction, I cross the fingers, and I get a clockwise moment. Therefore, it's a negative one. Now let's do F, the moment produced by F1Y. This is the distance, which is 0 0.2, the force is 3 over 2, and as you see, I place my hands right here at O, the distance right here, and I curl my fingers towards the force. So it's a positive moment. Therefore, here I have a negative component of this moment, and here I have a positive component. Now, MF2. At the end, I will add all those together, right? So Fs2 has also two components, F2x and F2y. If I slide this force over here, the distance is 0 0.1, and what I do is put my fingers here at O. My distance is a little bit difficult, but this is also 
this produce this force produce a positive moment. So it will be 0 0.1 times this component F2, which is already we know that is 3 right kilonewton. So this is kilonewton meter. And then I have this component, I slide it over here, and I have all this distance. And as you see, 0 0.5, I put my finger over here, and I curl the fingers towards the force, so I get a negative moment. And will be times for this component, which is 4. Okay, and this is in kilo newtons meters as well and then my force f3 as you see this has only one component i slide my force over here the distance is 0 0.2 the force is 4 and what is the sign of this moment again i put my uh, my this is where o is located this is the distance i curl my finger and it's negative kilonewton meters. I add all these values and I get the moment will be a negative 2.46 kilonewton meters. And this is the value for the moment. Obviously I did not write it as a vector because I know it's in k direction because I'm working in 2D. But I know it's negative. It means that it's clockwise, right? So I was able to find the resultant force in terms of its as a vector in magnitude and direction. And I also was able to find the moment, right, of these three forces respect to O. So the reducing a system of forces 2.0 means finding the resultant force and finding the moment and was able to find both and this is the solution of this problem.